striking health care workers in New Brunswick are being forced to return to their jobs today. Premier Blaine Higgs has used emergency COVID-19 legislation to issue the order. The strike reached a boiling point in Fredericton yesterday when the Premier appeared at a news conference held by union leaders. Offer in relation to what has been provided here is exactly what was on the table yes. a week ago in a different format but the same dollars as was provided a week ago in, as a counter from, from uh, Mr. Dross. Mr. Dross, would that be correct? Uh, is that when you walked away from the table and didn't respond to our offer? That's when we broke talks down, yes. But would that be correct? Well, many of the province's public sector workers will remain on strike, but health care workers are now expected to report for their next shift. The province hasn't confirmed what the penalties will be for any workers who don't comply. Well, for more on this, we've reached QP New Brunswick President Stephen Drost. Now he is in Fredericton. Uh, Stephen, thanks so much for, your, for joining us. Thank you. Uh, let's talk about your reaction to the Premier's back-to-work order. Totally unnecessary, certainly uh, an overreach, and as far as we're concerned, uh, you know, continued abuse of power by this administration. Um, we had uh, previously in the day informed the uh, Premier we were prepared to send uh, workers back to work uh, if they could respond to our counter offer. Uh, the other thing that I've, I've also uh, learned is that, uh, you know, they were citing the need to do this because of uh, environmental services and laundry services. And I confirmed with the president in charge of the, uh, the local that uh, works in healthcare that they had already made arrangements to go in every four days uh, to assist with some of those environmental needs. And yet, of course, we are in still the middle of a pandemic. Uh, can you understand why there might be significant pressure, including from the two health authorities uh, in the province, uh, that uh, the premier might take this kind of action? We certainly uh, understand the concerns. Um, part of the reason that we are uh, you know, forced into this strike position, we had informed the premier back in May that he really needs to get these contracts resolved. We actually have 10 locals that are on strike um, and they haven't had contracts for four to five years. So the premier has had so much time to resolve these issues so back uh, after the, you know, as we were, um, the third wave was winding down, all of the models were quite clear that it would be, you know, the fourth wave would be coming in the fall. So we had uh, requested at the end of May that uh, he have these matters resolved before Labor Day. He knew that if in fact he had not done that, they, these 10 groups would uh, be taking strike votes. And um, 22,000 workers voted 94% in favor of strike action. And none of these workers, take this lightly. Um, they realize what's going on, but the healthcare system was in crisis before the pandemic. And uh, we have workers also on the inside that saying things aren't as bad as they're saying in certain areas. In some areas, there's no issues. They've accused the union of, you know, causing uh, undue delays or cancellations of uh, surgeries, elective surgeries. And again, very, very misleading. It's as if they're trying to incite hatred from the public towards the union, because as soon as this premier had uh, put us back into a state of emergency, they had canceled all elective surgeries. So there's a lot of misinformation being spread out there. And again, uh, we're having our lawyers look at that matter uh, with the order that came out yesterday. And certainly um, we feel it was totally unnecessary because we had made arrangements to, uh, to you know, ensure that we could support certain areas that required additional help. Now, you've invoked the Premier's name a few times there, and we showed, uh, introing this, the uh, rather remarkable, I don't know that I've ever seen this in a, a, a union uh, management uh, situation where uh, the Premier shows up at a news conference held by the union. What's your take on, on what the, uh, the state of relations are between QP and the province's Premier? Well, in terms of keeping New Brunswick and all of the members here in this province, there's 28,000 of us keeping, the relationship is uh, not good at all. But the Premier continues to insist that it's QP National that's driving this. Uh, and nothing further from the truth, uh, you know, there could be nothing further from the truth. Um, when you have 10 locals representing sectors right across, every sector right across the province, 
that have felt they have been pushed to the edge and must take job action to try and get these contracts settled. Um, the relationship with the premier is not good at all. That these workers feel they're being bullied, harassed, uh, and certainly not well represented by their elected. You know, this premier was elected to represent all New Brunswickers, and um, these workers are not feeling that uh, he's representing their interests very well. Stephen, we've got time for one more quick question, but. What would it take for you to see from the province, and as you've said, the premier, to try to get towards an end to this strike? He's been holding two pensions basically hostage. There's two groups uh, of the 10 that are uh, in, in bargaining um, who have defined benefit plans. Uh, the province has not made their contributions for the, since 2013. So so they basically, it would, you would, it would almost appear that they purposely underfunded them, and now they're trying to convert them. So they're holding the 10 uh, QP locals. None of you will receive general economic increases unless these two other unions that are part of the 10 agree to convert their pensions. And these two unions have both had legal action against the province. There was just an, an adjudication awarded where um, it, was, it was proven that the you know, these payments were almost purposely not being paid. So the government was ordered to pay back $69 million that they have defaulted in payment. And the other local involved also has adjudication coming up in May. So it's, it's just one of those most bizarre situations um, where 10 locals representing workers right across the province are being advised they can't have any contract settlements until these two groups agree to convert their pension. And none of them are prepared to do that. Okay. So it's a really, really unusual situation. And it's very unfortunate. These men and women, they work in the hospitals, the schools, transportation, social services. They just want to be able to, to keep up with the cost of living and to be able to provide for their families and serve the, the people of this province. Stephen, I want to thank you for your time for now, but we'll be watching as this continues. New Brunswick. Thank you, Mr. Northcott. You will have a good day. Or you can just call me John, but thank you anyway. New Brunswick QB I'm President Steve. Thank you, John. Stephen Drost joining us from Fredericton. Thank you. And we reached out to the New Brunswick Premier's Office for comment, and we'll update you as soon as we hear back.